all right bull runners welcome back to the channel so if you hold just a thousand xrp will you become a millionaire in today's video we're going to give you an extremely bullish xrp price prediction i'm going to give you a conservative xrp price prediction then also a bearish worst case scenario xrp price prediction so hop in the truck we're backing it up all the way to the bank grabbing the bags packing them and stacking them leaving no bags left behind so comment 777 if you guys are feeling blessed comment 777 if you're feeling bullish we got a lot of stuff to cover with you in this video and if you're going to become the first millionaire in your family tree you know what to do confirm it in the comments below let's run it all right so as you guys know this morning's consumer price index data just released as inflation showed at about 4.9 percent for april compared to uh, march at five but it's not too much lower than before and the crypto market right now is you know responding you see the s p 500 responding positively the crypto market as well too if i go to uh, bitcoin specifically it responded positively uh in the past day you can see that bitcoin went up from twenty-seven thousand all the way to twenty-eight thousand, and then it crashed uh recently down to twenty-six thousand nine hundred ninety-six. so a quick flash crash and then uh we look at the stock market as well too you know the s p 500 following the release well Treasury yields dropped from about 3.5% to 3.45 currently at the time of shooting this video. And the rise in prices was largely driven by higher energy costs and food costs, as well as rising prices for used cars and trucks. So what does all this mean? And why is the CPI important for you know something like XRP or the cryptocurrency industry? And uh, what does this mean for a price prediction? We're about 2.9% above the Fed's target of a 2% persistent inflation rate. So if they keep raising the effective federal funds rate, you know, 20 to 50 basis points for the next one to two FOMC meetings the next few months, well, that means that variable interest rates, mortgages, rent, uh, interest charges on your credit card, food, basic living expensive, expenses go up leading to lower consumer spending and more contraction coming for the economy, which can have a bullish or it can have a bearish outlook for the crypto market in the short term, depending on the Fed's next move that I'm gonna discuss in this video. And I need to cover this first so you can have a macro market look to get an accurate price prediction to forecast for the future of the cryptocurrency industry, specifically XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, Shiba Inu, Dogecoin, memes, meme coins, you name it. So what we need to look at right here is the 10 year to two year treasury yield curve. And I've talked about this in previous videos. This is an indicator of the state of the economy as well as a predictor of future macroeconomic conditions. Typically what happens here is longer term treasury bonds like the 10 year have higher yields than shorter term like the two year due to added risk and uncertainty associated with holding investments for longer periods of time. So typically when the two year is higher than the 10 year, we'll see an inverted curve here here, and that shows that investors don't have a long-term perspective outlook for the economy. So this phenomenon is known as the inverted yield curve. It's seen as a warning sign of impending economic recessions coming. And as you can see on the chart right here, we are in the negative. And we've been in the negative several times in the past that I'm gonna discuss with you in this video and show you how that's affected you know, the stock market, specifically the S&P 500 for the last few market crashes and what that could mean for this coming market crash. So if we look at the last time that the yield curve went inverted for an extended period of time, it was back in 2006 to 2007. And during that time, the S&P 500, if I go all the way back here, it rallied. Uh, about 20 percent and so it wasn't until the yield curve flipped positive and we saw the yield curve rise up to over you know 2.45 percent uh right here and then it rose all the way up to you know above 2.8 percent ultimately above 2.84 percent by 2011 and then what we saw happen to the s p 500 is the s p 500 crashed over 57 percent you know down to 670 right here by 2009 and so if we look back to the time where it was inverted before this was february of 2000 and it flipped positive in january 2001 now the stock market what happened there is the stock market peaked out and then it started to roll over so where are we right now well the yield curve inverted and stated the negative since july 5th of 2022 and the s p is experiencing right now a short-term temporary 20 percent rally from the october lows so once the yield curve flips into the positive and shoots up quickly like what happened back in 2009 and also from 2001 till 2003 then historically the s p 500 has gotten absolutely destroyed after those points and we see the yield curve rise rapidly so does that mean that the stock market will crash you know if the fed keeps raising their effective federal funds rate or will it happen once they pause rates and start cutting while the yield curve flips positive and goes back above you know zero percent 
Well, in order to understand what would happen, we have to look at more data and we have to look at the effective federal funds rate on what they were doing with the interest rates at that time and how was it affecting the uh, yield curve inversion and also how it was affecting the stock market. Because when we look at the Fed uh, rates from 2004, right, we go all the way back here uh, from 2004, July of 2004 to August of 2006, the yield curve, what happened there as they were raising rates? Well, the yield curve took a dive down and the S&P rallied over 20%. When they paused rates from July of 2006 till 2007 and then they held this line on the rate hikes for an entire year the 10 year to two year spread was still inverted at that time and the stock market rallied one final time a little over 20 percent before it peaked out and it wasn't until they started cutting rates in july of 2007 from 5.26 percent all the way down to virtually nothing in december of 2008 to 0.16 percent which is crazy and then we saw the 10 year to two year curve grow up from like 0.03 percent all the way up to 2.45%, so it rose drastically. And then what happened after that? Well, since the stock market peaked, we saw the stock market absolutely tank when they started cutting rates and the yield curve inversion spiking up at that point. So if we go back to the dot-com crash back in 2000, the Fed had just gone from lowering rates from the all-time high, even from 1989 all the way down to about three, roughly 3% 3 to 1994. And then until June of 2000, they were raising rates all the way up until about 6.53%. So that was about six years. And what happened in the yield curve inversion, it dropped from above 1.5% all the way down into the negative. And while the Fed was raising rates at that time period, we saw the S&P 500 rally over almost 250% to the all-time high. It wasn't until we saw the Fed pause rates right here, June of 2000 to November of 2000, right around here at 6.51%. And they held the line just like they did from right here from July of 2006 until July of 2007. Well, the 10 year to two year was still inverted at that point, very similar to what happened in 2006 to 2007. And then we saw the stock market top out and start to roll over. And then when they started cutting rates in December of 2000, they didn't stop until about May of 2004 when it was all the way down to about 1%. And so what happened to that period on the 10 year to two year? Well, we saw the yield curve inversion spike up from 2000 to the end of 2004. Even before then, it was at 2.69% in the stock market took one of the worst dives in history and dropped over 50%. So during that time period, what'd the Fed wanna do? Well, they thought it would be a good idea to start raising interest rates again. And uh, from July of 2004 until August of 2006, the yield curve took another dive down during these rate hikes into the negative. And while that was happening, we saw the stock market rally out of those lows from 2003. Then like I just mentioned, they paused rates again. They held the pause for about a year. The 10 year to two year was in the negative. While it was in the negative, the stock market saw one final rally of about 25%. Then it wasn't until they started cutting rates in 2007 down to virtually nothing uh, until December of 2008 that the yield curve spiked up from that point, just like it did back here, 2000 to 2004. Then during that spike, the S&P tanked again another 50 plus percent. So in summary, the past two major stock market crashes back to back happened not when the Fed was raising the effective federal funds rate, right? This happened after they paused when they held the line and then they started cutting down the rates and then the yield curve uh, inversion flipped and went into the positive drastically. That's when we saw the stock market crash. So with the recent CPI data right here showing 4.9% with inflation and then the Fed Chair Jerome Powell saying they have a 2% target, well in order to hit that target, they need to keep raising interest rates for a few more meetings and unemployment needs to rise, meaning there needs to be more layoffs. So which sucks because Americans will lose their job in order for inflation to come back down otherwise the fed will have to keep jacking up interest rates to bring it down because the u.s economy gained about 253,000 jobs in april and if we look at the unemployment rate right here it's down to 3.4 percent which is the lowest it's been in a long time and so the relationship between the unemployment rate and inflation is often described as the phillips curve and as you see on the phillips curve right here this suggests that as unemployment decreases inflation increases and vice versa now this relationship can be explained by the fact that when labor market is tight and unemployment is low well employers may need to compete for workers by raising wages so as joe biden keeps bragging about saying things like we're not finished yet by any stretch of the imagination but unemployment rate is at 3.4 percent a 50 year low a near record a near record unemployment. Near record unemployment for black and Hispanic workers. 
Well, that's good news for American workers, but that's actually not good for inflation because as wages increase and business costs also increase, this leads to higher prices for goods and services, which results to more inflation. On the other hand, when unemployment is high, there is less competition for workers, which means employers don't need to raise wages as much and the downward pressure on prices uh, can reduce inflation. So if the government wants to reduce inflation, it can try to in increase unemployment by uh, adopting different policies that reduce aggregate demand, such as increasing interest rates, which they've been doing, right? Reducing government spending or increasing taxes. So as Joe Biden keeps bragging about low unemployment, well, that can cause more damage and people don't really understand that. So the policies that they implement to combat this uh, decrease demand for goods and services because it's more expensive to borrow money and take out loans, leading to lower prices and reducing inflation. And with the rise of artificial intelligence over the next few decades, tons of people will lose their jobs, but it's also going to create some new opportunity too. If you know how to use artificial intelligence like we're doing as a software company, uh, if you check out the link in the description, you'll see how we merged with ChatGB but the federal funds rate will have more weight right now on inflation than the unemployment rate. But if you look at the unemployment rate right here, the past 80 years, well, it moves in waves. So we're more than likely going to see a rise in unemployment soon with advances in artificial intelligence and job outsourcing overseas because it can't stay low forever. You can even see the Elliott waves in the unemployment rate. So for the people that say we're going to have low unemployment forever, well, that's like saying winter is never going to come. It's just as delusional as the people believe in job security right job security is like the Easter Bunny you got to keep hunting for the eggs you might find some eggs every single week which is your paychecks but you never find the rabbit which is true job security and with the extraordinary measures that the Fed and the Treasury are mentioning that they've been implementing for a while now you know cutting costs and cutting wages and trying to cut back on their balance sheet well the head of the Treasury has no other choice other than to ask Congress right now to raise the debt ceiling so the government doesn't default on its obligations so they can pay their bills which would cause a massive crash in the markets in the short term so that's a big uh, reverse UNO card that we do need to watch out for over the next two weeks on how reluctant Congress is to uh, raise the debt ceiling because if they do it in a timely manner, then that's bullish for crypto, that's bullish for stocks. But if they don't, then that's extremely, extremely bearish in the short term as investors would panic, they'd pull money out of the market. So this brings me to the crypto market, right? I had to cover all that so you guys have a macro market outlook on this and also how will this affect XRP because if they don't raise the debt ceiling in a timely manner and the lawsuit between Ripple and the SEC is still going on and then the crypto market sees a sell-off, then XRP would uh, see a sell-off as well too. So what is my extremely bullish What's my conservative and what's my bearish prediction for XRP? Well, I want to start with the bearish. Let's start with the bad news first, because it's important to look at that, because if you know, you don't think anything negative ha could happen to one crypto, then that's like a little kid saying that Santa Claus is still real. 10 a.m. Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh, my God. I know him. So for a bearish scenario for XRP, that's based on central banking digital currencies, not using Ripple's technology, not using XRP as the bridge currency, you know, them trying to create their own tech, basically stiff arming Ripple. Uh, and that would be Ripple losing the lawsuit with the SEC, other countries having to use uh, CBDC technology without Ripple or XRP based on the uh, Bank for International Settlements, which is the central bank of central banks. Combat that with something like World War III, right? The pet Fed pivoting at some point to pause on rates, then start cutting rates and all that. Let's say it hits all at the same time for the entire crypto in the stock market crashing, you know, even worse than what we saw in the 1929 stock market crash, even worse than uh, 2000 and the 2000 to 2003 market crash, and even worse than the 2007 to 2009 crash. If that were to happen, right, probably be best then if, if an asteroid just hit the earth and uh, Jesus returns because there's no investment that would be safe other than industries that, you know, produce goods and services necessary for like war efforts, such as, you know, you got like de defense contractors, steel manufacturers, oil companies. In addition, you got companies that provide consumer goods, you know, that get in short supply during wartime, like rationing things like food, clothing, water, you know, household goods, those could do well. Uh, and you have things like precious metals as well too, like gold, you know, silver, and you know countries like China as well, they're investing into precious metals through the Belt and Road Initiative, and then uh, consumer electronics too, because there would be a trade war as well. You know things like laptops, cell phones. I feel like those would go up in in value as well too. So crypto in this case, you know that would be taking more of a back burner in my investment portfolio during a scenario like this compared to things like precious metals, food, 
water, you know, and things like that. If World War Three goes full blown Armageddon mode, right? We're in World War Three right now. We're currently in trade war and a currency war as they try to devalue the, the US dollar. And of course that would be, you know, worst case bearish scenario if it leads to a kinetic war, which would be nukes and, you know, trade restrictions and closing things down for the economy uh, with trading with different countries uh, due to, you know, nuking the ships or whatever sailing out of the country. But it's always smart to prepare for stuff like that, right? Prepare for harsh winters because you know, that was the biggest lesson I had to learn the hard way of making money going broke, making money going broke over the past, you know, 10 plus years building different businesses because I didn't prepare for a worst case scenario. So I like to look, I get excited, uh, not because of talks of war, like that's actually scary, but I, I get excited, you know, preparing for a worst case scenario because that's where the most millionaires and billionaires are made. And then, um, you know, you just got to protect yourself and protect your family. So in terms of price prediction for XRP for that, I mean, XRP would get obliterated, you know, XRP would, would drop all the way down, you know, 11 cents, maybe even below that. I don't know how low XRP could go with all of that stuff happening at the same time without winning the lawsuit and then not having support from countries overseas. So that's worst case scenario. I don't think that's going to happen. But again, I'm prepared for that. Now, my conservative scenario would be a balanced portfolio, right, between uh, real estate. And if you can't afford real estate, then it'd be like precious metals, uh, you know, gold, silver, I have gold, silver, crypto, and then XRP being no more than 5% of my crypto portfolio under a conservative approach, right? I would expect XRP to, you know, drop in price uh, in the short term before breaking out. And I would expect it to drop maybe down to, you know, 30 cents, anything lower than that on a bearish conservative approach would be about 16 cents down within this range um, down here, 11 cents to 16 cents at the absolute bottom. That's if we see Bitcoin tank as well too. And that's if we see a stock market crash. So that's still like a conservative uh, bearish approach. And then after the lawsuit, but I would expect XRP to still hold a sizable market cap in comparison to other cryptocurrencies and rebound after the Fed is done cutting rates over the next few years. And that has its um, lagging effects into the markets. And that would be under a losing scenario too for XRP versus the SEC lawsuit. But other countries, you know, still would use Ripple's tech uh, between companies like in countries, you know, you see like SBI remit for cross border payments between, you know, you got like Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, then you have uh, Banco Bradesco with cross border payments between Brazil and Japan and uh, many others using Ripple's distributed ledger technology without worrying about XRP being declared a security in the USA because their services wouldn't pertain to US citizens. And I know you might be asking yourself right now, well, if you're a US citizen, then how would you be able to you know, own XRP if it's declared a security in the USA, let alone sell XRP? Well, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. It's not financial advice because I report on the news and then I share with you, you know, what's happening in the markets, but I can tell you what some people out there are doing, what they're talking about, which I don't recommend, you know, such as like VPNs or buying passports to gain citizenship in other countries that may be more favorable for certain cryptocurrencies like XRP. And now that's that's hypothetical. It's not my financial advice. OK, I'm just giving you some of my thoughts there. If you agree, you know, if you're planning on investing overseas, they do like golden visas in Dubai and they you can buy your citizenship in other countries. And if you want to renounce your citizenship of the United States, that's up to you, depending on what happens with this country as we have a shift in world power to China over the next few years, it's inevitable, right? The world reserve currencies only last every 75 to 100 years. United States dollar is on year 79. And so that's where China is uh, taking over. That's what Ray Dalio says. He's a multi-billionaire. This guy's an absolute genius when it comes to investing. So I like to listen to billionaires and then I base my investing strategy on what they're doing. So either way, the best move is just to make more money so you can have more options, more freedom. So you're not relying on one crypto like XRP to do what it did back in 2017. You see back here, XRP led the cryptocurrency bull run because this time around we have CBDCs, right? Central banking digital currencies coming this summer and we don't know, right? So my bullish outlook, my bullish outlook for XRP uh, would rely on a few things. Number one would be the debt ceiling being raised before the deadline, right? Because in order for XRP to rise along with the rest of the industry, more liquidity in the system is good for crypto, even though it's bad for inflation and cost of goods and services because they're just printing their way into a, an economic disaster. Well, that money flows somewhere and it flows into the markets, right? Because when more money's put into existence, well, then people hedge against that inflation and they put it into stocks, into crypto, real estate, and precious metals. So. Also, number two, 
Ripple would need to come out with a lawsuit win. That would spark the initial rally. You know, I would ex expect XRP to shoot up to the uh, the highs right here of 2021, um, roughly around a dollar, right? A dollar to, you know, two dollars relatively quickly. Then what I would expect is some investors who've been waiting since April of 2021 that bought during the peak of the bull runs, they might sell as we consolidate for a little bit. Then if liquidity continues to flow into the rest of the crypto market, I would expect us to retest the all time high. If the rest of the market isn't seeing a sell off at that time and we're still healthy. So if the market's looking healthy, you know, I would expect liquidity to come from other large caps, right? Because if we go back here on coinmarketcap.com and we look at the other large caps on the market cap on these, XRP's market cap is only $22 billion. There's a lot of money in this world. Even the entire cryptocurrency market cap is only $1 trillion, right? The market cap of gold is over, was over 10 trillion. I mean, I don't know what market cap of gold is right now. We could Google that real quick, but it's around $10 trillion. So this whole industry isn't even, isn't even really 10%. It's like barely 10% of gold. And so I don't necessarily think that XRP right after the last lawsuit, you know, would blast off right to five to ten dollars because there would be some selling pressure and there depends on macro market conditions, potential war with China escalating, which would cause uncertainty. But by 2025, my bullish price prediction for XRP would be roughly five to ten dollars. You can see a 1.618 on the Fibonacci retracement would put it at roughly five dollars and thirty eight, almost five dollars and forty cents. Now, my ultra bullish price prediction by 2030, you know, would be a full extension a little bit beyond a full extension on the fibonacci retracement of you know roughly 14 dollars all the way upwards of of 30 dollars with bitcoin being between 120 thousand to 180 thousand dollars and bitcoin's market cap being above 10 trillion dollars by 2030. so this year well if the lawsuit comes to a close then i would expect xrp to you know retest the high of 2021 potentially the high of uh, all time, right? And beyond that, let's say it's like $589 Simpsons XRP price predictions that you see. Well, those are conspiracy videos. So I'm not basing my investing strategy on some nonsense, even though I do like the Simpsons. Okay. I, I grew up on the Simpsons. Simpsons. They've been right about a lot of predictions. Um, the only thing that the Simpsons, you know, referring to though, that I've seen is distributed ledger technology and they don't mention XRP specifically. So my portfolio of al allocation of XRP is a little higher right now as I'm leaning more towards the bullish scenario uh, because XRP is my largest altcoin by market cap, which could prove to be a great move or hey, a good learning lesson either way.